I, I think Pendle Hill will always be um, an extraordinary place for us, and that's why I really was very keen that we should do this programme so that we could have a chance for everybody who was affected by Pendle Hill to talk about it and explain how they felt. I know that so many people um, who watch the program, you know, the questions that I got asked the next day and, and since then was how the crew, what actually happened, what were they experiencing? And it seemed to me that it was important that we should try and get closure on the whole uh, Pendle Hill experience. Dark, ominous, foreboding. These are the fitting words to describe Pendle Hill. It rises like a gravestone from the peaceful valleys of Lancashire and casts a terrifying shadow across all who see it. The hill has been the epicenter of paranormal activity with ghosts, monsters, lights, sounds and horrific creatures dominating histories of the area. It is most famous though for the Pendle Witch Story in which a group of locals were ruthlessly and savagely tried and hanged in Tudor times. 400 years later, the locals still speak in hushed tones about this dark part of their history. Pendle Hill stands like a paranormal beacon touching all who see it with a sense of bleak sadness, of spiritual malaise, of dark fear. It is without doubt one of the most haunted places in Britain. We were looking at it as another live event. Um, we always look forward to them. Uh, they're very different, much different from the series. The series obviously we have 24 hours to look over uh, a haunted property on a live event, even though we have three nights. We only have three hours and we have to investigate multiple uh, locations. So it's, it's, there's a lot more uh, technical uh, thought to be had rather than just um, paranormal thoughts on a live. When I first heard we were going to Pendle Hill, I was very excited because Pendle Hill to me is the ultimate place. You've got the tales of witchcraft, but an awful lot of history and documented history around it as well. And when we actually got there and you could see that bulk dome of Pendle Hill rising above the plain, I, I just thought, this is it. My initial impression was, this is another investigation. This is another haunted location, and the team are going to react as professionally as they normally do. As far as I was concerned, it was just another, another show. Um, so I was just going about my business as usual. Everyone was in quite high spirits. As long as we were on air and everyone at home is in the pictures, we then can relax and enjoy the investigation. For the first time, I think, in my career, I was generally worried for the safety of my crew. I've been to a lot of very frightening places. I've been to war zones, I've been all over the world, but nothing compares to your good friends being attacked by things you can't even see, things you don't understand. I don't think anybody on the team could have possibly imagined uh, the phenomena and the experiences that we all encountered over those three nights uh, of our Halloween investigation. We'd also had a warning from David Wells as well, um, which made us a bit fearful. I've worked with the team a long time now, uh, either on the series or in the lives, and these are people you know that I've come to trust, come to. Uh, well, to enjoy working with, so I think for me, you know, their, their safety is paramount. The first time in the history of Most Haunted um, that I have ever felt that concerned was when David Wells was sitting no more than three foot from me and doing some automatic handwriting. Last night, David Wells was involved in an automatic writing experiment. He came up with some, well, ominous results, which might well be relevant for our investigation tonight. So you know, during the, the very first look. night when Carl and myself were doing some automatic writing, there was some other stuff coming through, but at one point this completely fresh um, entity, for want of another word, came in. There was a very agitated um, soul I can use that word to uh, that was taking over his hand and forcing him to to write very very um, hard into a piece of paper that he was actually tearing the papers he was writing and he really 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 scored it he really went bang up to one particular geographical point and it felt felt to me like the hand of a compass it was a point and I think I actually drew an arrow on the end and dug right into the paper now David doesn't know um, geographically where he is um, where he's actually positioned, but the arrow that was drawn was directly pointed towards the hill, uh, Pendle Hill, and as we found out later, directly towards Tyndale Farm. You seen wings, wings. Can 
I hate to be melodramatic about this, but this it's like he's saying wait until tomorrow. And to be honest, it really scared me because, you know, because my friends were going to be there, they were going to be out there, and I, I wanted to know more, but he, he wouldn't give me any more. What does that mean, wait until tomorrow, David Wells? Well, I think he was referring to the fact that he's waiting for Yvette and Derek, whoever this being is. And does that make you nervous for Derek, Yvette and the rest of the team tonight? Certainly, yeah. It makes me nervous about what may happen. He was given us a warning um, for the second night something was actually going to happen to the crew members. We didn't know where, at that point, um, they were going to show themselves to us. But obviously, we're, we're out there to, to investigate paranormal activity, so we have to do it. We have to go there. It doesn't matter how frightened we are. It's something we have to do. Um, so we asked everyone if they were happy to carry on, and they were. I know that Derek's very experienced to be able to handle it, but I don't think we're talking Teletubbies here. OK. Does that make you nervous, Yvette? I just uh, heard that. Um, it doesn't make me feel very happy at all. Even the night before, I was getting uh, psychic insights and feelings that were coming to me thick and fast. And, you know, there was this, like, impending fear of uh, what was awaiting the, the whole Most Haunted team. I've got this apprehension also. I, yeah. I didn't want to tell you this, as severe as what it is, but there's something uh, of an energy that does not want us to go in or even talk about uh, the conditions on this property. We've done lots and lots of investigations, and for David Wells to actually turn around um, to Carl and members of the crew and say, you know, something's going to happen, it was quite concerning. The first thing I did when I saw everyone was to, to warn them. I know they would probably at some point see the footage. However, I wanted to tell them personally to take great care and to make sure that they, they thought about the protection. So I spoke to you know, Carl, Yvette and Derek particularly about it and all the crew and sort of had a word with them about, about keeping safe. started off in uh, Lower Wellhead Farm. Well, <clears throat> we're just coming inside Lower Wellhead Farm. Uh, the dogs are howling outside. Yeah, they the are. Dog. Yeah, they're really, really oh, responding God. to these energies in the area here. And uh, it's a little bit disconcerting in the feelings. Okay. As we've entered this room here, yeah. we've only stepped a couple of steps of it, and the feelings all around me are, you know, there's a feeling of revulsion here. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, and it's surround, and it's, it's like, it's, a, it's a, alien, not alien, it's alien in the sense it doesn't, the energies do not want us here. I know that that had been um, uh, quite, we'd been quite successful in finding certain phenomena. I just heard, a, it's like a ting, ting, ting. ting. Yes, did you hear that, yeah. You did? Yeah. Which direction did you hear it from? Through there. Yeah, yeah. When I was a little bit, obviously, very apprehensive when we first came into the building, um, I know Carl um, saw something in one of the windows. Uh, well, when we were just outside and you did your first piece, mm. um, I turned around because I saw someone upstairs above this room through the window. I thought it was one of the crew. Uh, and I turned and asked who's upstairs, but we're all accounted for. We're all downstairs and just in the front room. Get the thumbs. Okay. Take the scalp. Derek, Derek, come mm. forward. Derek, come forward. Derek, come forward. Derek, Derek, come forward. I know Kath had experienced stuff. Do you think it would be a good idea to go downstairs and yes. try um, the glass um, divination on, on the table to maybe try and make contact? I'm sure with these won't. Be... What? Do you hear that? What? 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 Do you hear that screaming, Who squealing? What's happened? Who was it? What? A what? What's the matter? What? What's it? What? 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 What's happened? This door. What, what do you mean this door? Both me and Carol are in here. It's really, really cold. And the door pushed. It was pushed. Are you joking? Well, I had hold of it. The 
the door was just pushed out of my hand. Both me and Carl was in the room just having a look round and the door was just pushed out of my hand and it was there was nobody else around which made me scream very loud. Um, that just completely unnerved me. Are you alright? It's good, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Use our collective energy here. Use everybody's energy and try and talk to us by using the glass. Who's in there? Mm -hmm. Who's in there? I just double checked before there's nobody in there. <laughs> You're right. So for the rest of the night, I felt really, really, really scared about going to other locations. Having gone from Lower Wellhead Farm to Tyndale Farm, um, everybody had a heightened sense of um, uh, anxiety. Actually on the way to Tyndale Farm, um, obviously it's, it's very much in your face because you've got to get all the trucks down there, the crew have got to get down there, and basically you're in the middle of nowhere, it's pitch black. So basically we all turn up, um, as we all step out the vehicles it's literally three to four inches in mud. Little did we know that when we trundled down the, the tiny dirt track to Tyndale Farm, what exactly was going to happen. Um, it's a very spooky looking place. Uh, the door is barely uh, uh, attached. As we actually walk inside the building, my first reactions are, oh my, you know, we're actually in a haunted house. Tyndale Farm is the derelict remains of a once proud Tudor dwelling. This side of the valley has a chequered paranormal history with frequent sightings of monks and women in grey. But it's the house itself which seems to be the focus of activity. It was bought by a local family and they allege that the house is full of spirits and presences. Lights, screams and bangs seem to come from the buildings after dark and most of the locals won't come anywhere near it. Could this be the site of the Pendle Witch's secret meeting place? The building itself looked the typical haunted house. And because it was so derelict, and because we'd heard stories of um, uh, the present owner uh, hating the place, she hadn't actually been there for 20 years, it made me feel a little bit anxious to begin with. It was just another derelict building that didn't look good, that good on camera, it looked quite spooky that we were just doing another most haunted live in. Having experienced um, a lot of paranormal activity at the first location, um, I felt really, really scared going to the farm. When we got there, um, we felt fine. I remember feeling fine about it because, of course, we had all the OB crew um, behind us, big trucks, lots of wiring, lots of people outside. But then, of course, when we went inside and there was just the crew and myself, we instantly um, felt nervous. Tandale Farm was unusual in there. It was totally derelict. It was a, a ruined building. Uh, we'd done, I'd done one derelict building before, that was my first recorded show, but it was completely different, that was a big hall, and Tyndale Farm was, it was your archetypal spooky haunted house, it was grimy, miserable outside, it just looked, it looked like bad things happened there. I was concerned about the farm when I saw it on uh, the inserts that uh, we'd recorded um, prior to the investigation, so I knew that we were going to encounter something that appeared to be just on a different level to some of the other things that we've done on our most haunted live. It is a derelict building and obviously my main concern is the safety. There was a lot of areas we couldn't take the crew um, due to partial collapse, due to the floorboards missing and everything like that. Places that seem very haunted don't often, um, don't often live up to the expectations. Things happen but not as much as you might expect. Um, this location on the other hand I had very high hopes for. I think the whole crew had um, I had very high expectations about, uh, about Tyndale Farm. The Halloween live was my first live for Most Haunted, so obviously I was quite nervous. I've done, I think I've done five uh, recorded shows by then, but it's still quite new to me. I had a lot of um, anxiety about, um, about the live being done at uh, Tyndale Farm. You know, I was just really busy as usual, running around, setting up and ready to go and thought nothing unusual would happen that night. Uh, little did I know what would happen. I had no idea that it would be 
as uh, overwhelming and um, quite as exciting as it was. Going to Tyndale Farm, um, walking in there, it's derelict, it looks really, it looks the part, it's spooky. What happened at that particular location was fantastic. It was for me a psychological hotbed of activity. The phenomena that was experienced by the team, I think, started at least two hours before. And by that I mean the experiences that they were having at Lower Wellhead Farm and the second farm location, which is derelict. Their experiences there, the anxiety, the fear, in addition to all of the information that Derek was coming up with and building up the suggestion level, meant that when we got to the last location, Tyndale Farm, everybody's anxiety level was increased. It was at an extreme level. Well, welcome back to Most Haunted Live on this Halloween night. So much has happened so far. And although Derek has had loads of experiences, I've also been told that loads of the other t of the team have also had experiences. Kath, for example, and Yvette herself. Um, we are actually going to go over to probably the most unnerving of tonight's locations. It's Tyndale Farm. When we were travelling towards the, the site, um, I was becoming very psychically aware. I, I think I went very quiet. I'm not talking and I was reflecting and I was, you know, mentally linking with Sam, asking Sam what we should do and of course he gave me the uh, immediate uh, response of you must protect, you must throw out the protection all around the team and you also must tell them what they're likely to expect even though you don't know totally what is going to happen. And the team are there right now so let's go and join them. Okay. This is a horrible place, isn't it? Yeah. How are we all feeling We're inside? Feeling it's inside. not as if you're like here and shutting the yeah, door. Yeah, I'll shut the door behind right. us. As soon as I walked into Tyndale Farm, the goosebumps on the whole of my body just went up. I was, I don't know what it was. The atmosphere was electric. It was terrifying. This is horrible, yeah. horrible place. Yeah, no, it hasn't. Always. When we first entered in, uh, I was very aware that there were five of those witches of nine and they give me a warning that the other four were coming over. I did say to the crew, to all the team, um, the other four are going to come at a later time and we've got to be very, very careful. Very careful because, you know, we're not talking about dealing with one witch or two. We're talking about nine. And no one really knows. I certainly didn't know what they could really, really do. There's a very famous film called Blair Witch. This is it on a bigger scale. I can't... That's how I'm describing it to you. It's derelict. It's, it's just nasty. It's a horrible place. My initial reaction, as soon as I walked around, straight away I thought, something's going to happen in here and it's going to be very, very serious. And straight away I tracked back to what David Wells was telling Carl and the rest of the crew. I actually realised at that point things were actually going to go down that night. I was sitting in the studio, which I find quite frustrating because, of course, I want to be out there. I understand why I have to be there, but it's frustrating. There wasn't anything up here to me that was going to obviously fold out to the events that happened. I don't know what it was, I can't explain it, but it did feel as if something was watching you right from the moment I set my foot over that front door, and I didn't like it. Should we go down into the cellar? Yeah. Okay, if we yeah. go down That's first, fine. you all right, Derek? Kieran, yes. everybody? Yeah, I'm fine. Holy <coughs> moly, look You're at okay, that. Yeah. Oh, my... There's a few things that happened earlier. As soon as you walked in there, Stuart and I did go down into the cellar. Uh, I thought I saw some strange shape down there. Again, that could have been lighting, could have been anything. Uh, Stuart wasn't very comfortable. We heard some shuffling sounds, and we thought... We thought we heard something whisper at us, but we didn't know what it was. Oh, where we go? What? Oh, look, they're coming in, just like the crew. They're coming in here now. Are they? They've followed us in. There's a group of them again, Evie. I had to have people in front of me, behind me, to the side of me. I did not want uh, to have any of my space around me empty. I needed to have somebody there. They're saying, get out. They're telling us to get out. Well, if they want us to get out, then maybe they should show us something, make a noise. Move something. Can they hear my voice? They can hear you, right. they can hear all of us, okay. and they can see us what as well. What if I was to antagonise? Well, Is that a daft thing to do? I mean, you can, you, you can question them, but, uh, 
you know, I, I wouldn't advise to total antagonise because I feel they're in an angered state anyway. Okay. And they followed us. They don't need vehicles to follow us either. There were the nine witches headed by Elizabeth Dendike, who was a, a nasty sort in herself. And I felt that uh, we really shouldn't antagonise them purely simply because you're talking about the power of nine collectively. And I wasn't quite sure what they could actually um, do with this power. If anything happens, can you hear me upstairs? Yeah. Right, if anything happens up there, you just shout out, OK? Yeah. Yeah? All right. Oh, I feel sick. You all right? Yeah. Turn the yeah. camera on yourself, John. You all right? Do you yeah. feel faint? Yeah, I feel sick. Really sick. They're actually going to be draining on our energies now. They're going to be zapping us for our energy. This is one of the first things that you do, a spirit person, and in this case, witch, a witch spirit person, would come to John and drain off his vital energies. It's really uh, classified as psychic vampirism. And poor John got this um, uh, feeling of great sickness, his head was banging, and you know, this is all what actually happens when a particular spirit person wants to gain that energy. And that energy is for one thing, so they can maintain themselves in the atmosphere of where they want to do their nasty work. How does everybody else feel? Stuart, John? Do you want the truth? Yeah, go on, Stuart. Bad my friend, but I'm absolutely fucking petrified. Are you really? Yeah, last location, and um, on the way down here, had a quick wander around, and what I was witnessing was nice. I thought, okay. Evil. Right, it's not yeah. not good. No. Okay. We're grouped here for ritual, ritual sending out thoughts, sending out thoughts, and it's as if they wanted to. That seems to be like a spiritual act, but it's not a spiritual act. It's the opposite of it. And it most certainly was a very strong negative energy when we entered. And what they were doing, the five, the five witches, what they were doing, they were trying to summon up the negative energies of the other four to come from a new, another location. And also, I felt deep down in the, the, the back of my thoughts that they were also trying to summon up something of a negative energy from the lower regions of the world of spirit. That didn't appear to actually happen. But the other witches, they arrived and they did what they did. This is the woman, there's this woman, she, there she is, and she's got those, she's got those fingers and she's got the bones and she's putting them together and she's placing them. It's in this area, on here. And it's as if she's, this is evil and dark and they want to bring these people back and they want to bring their friends back and they're sending these thoughts. There's a group of them and collectively they are evil. They are evil, and they've left the stench of evil here. John, are you all right? John, yeah. you're, not, you're not looking good at all. No, no, I've got a, I've got a sore throat, really sore throat. Yeah. I don't feel like tightening, but I just feel like it's suddenly got very sore. We started a seance and I felt quite comfortable, everything was okay. It was a very spooky place, um, but you know, I felt quite comfortable. I suggest, why don't we try sitting around the table and maybe yes. trying to get something going so, here? Yeah, please, Derek, yeah. Derek, Kath. Okay. You can do that. When we was in there, it was just another seance as far as I'm concerned. And really, although I'm, I'm with the team all the time, I'm not really one of the investigators. I'm mainly there for the safety of the team and that's constantly observing them, constantly wearing and aware. And if I'm not happy with any of them, any of their conditions whatsoever, I am going to pull them out. I remember us all feeling a little bit nervous, not knowing what to expect. There's always a great air of expectancy when we, when we do a seance. And what I, what I suppose I really thought was, you know, I, I didn't actually think very much was going to happen, if I was actually honest with you. Please come forward. Please try. The temperature has dropped re around my legs. Are you picking that up, Kira? Yes, I am. You are. Can you yeah. see that? John, can you go around and get that on the thermal imaging camera? At the moment, we, we felt the table move slightly, and Carl is feeling... What are you feeling, Carl? Are you all right? Yeah, I'm... I'm, I'm I don't know how I feel. I feel drained. I feel like I'm kind of... 
one minute I'm here, and the next minute your your voice is like just a distant echo. It's Are you really okay? Weird. Yeah. Do you want and me I, to carry on? I, 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 yeah, I want to see where this is going. Okay. Yes. During the live transmission, my job is really to be uh, to make sure that. Uh, uh, from the channel's perspective that our investigation stays within the regulations and uh, as this seance started um, I was quite excited about it. Kieran, any suggestions how we can make this more either, I don't know... The... No, the first thing is to move your hands out. I've just had a huge breeze right across my hand here. Can you feel that, Derek? I felt it coming across my left hand. OK. And again. OK. Well, we started to do the seance um, all the hair started to stand up on the back of my neck because it's very cold and you've got everyone's energies building up, you know, so, that, so there's a great atmosphere inside that one room. Alice Nutter. Alice, can you hear me? If you want to talk to us, please give us a sign, let us know that you're here. We need more of a sign. Can you move the table for us in any way? Move this glass, affect one of us if you can. Talk to one of us. Use Derek. Use his voice box. Please try and talk to us. Touch Kath, myself, touch Carl, any members of the people here in this room. Show us some lights if you can. Please step forward. Use our energies now. Use our energies. You're right, Carl. I am freezing. It is freezing. Yes. It's so cold. There's, You're right, there's close spiritual energy. It could be. Alice, it okay. could be Alice Nutter, of this. Okay. Someone's moving the table. Oh, <gasps> oh my God. Is that you, Alice? He's floating. Yes. Alice, can you hear me if you can? Make the table move more violently, please, so that we know you're here. Please make the table move more violently if you can hear my voice. Is that you, Alice? Please move the table more. Please, if you can, let's lift our arms back. Do you think, Kieran? Yes, to the edge of the table. Edge of the table. Okay. Please try and talk to any of us. Please. I can see the breath in front of my... Is it moving? Oh, yeah, it is. Please try and talk to us now if you can. Please move this table. If you can. Try and talk to Derek. Use his voice box if you can. Touch one of the people in this room. Make the glass move on its own. Bang one of the doors in the house. Let Whoa. us know. God, there is such a draft. Yeah. It's moving, isn't it? Is that table moving again? Yeah, it is. Whoa. Yeah. I'm going to take my hands off. Mm. Please try and talk to us. If you're a witch and you used to practice here, then please don't be a coward. Come forward. Try and touch one of us. Try and move this table. Move the glass. Affect one of us. Touch one of us. Anything you can. Whisper in our ear. Bang something. Do anything at all. Show us some lights. Is it moving? It's, it's, yeah, it's been moving. Just a bit. Yeah. If, it's, if it's not Alice, is it, the, is it the man that accused her? OK. Are you a man present? Are you male present? If you are, then please give us a bigger sign. We need a bigger sign. Oh, Grief that's moving. It's creaking. Yes. Do you hear please creaking? give us a bigger sign. Let us know that you are here. Please, if you can try and lift this table, please let us know that you are here, that you wish to talk to us. Lift the table if you can. Lift the table if you can for me. As a sign of yes. You all right, Carl? Carl? You're What's right. the matter? You're, you're just going into that. I can hardly hear you. Do you want to step mm -hmm. out the no, stairs? No, right. Kieran, do you want to try on the glass and see if we get any? Ooh. You yeah. all right? What's the matter? What's up? What's up, Cam? Are you all right? John, was you behind me then? No, I wasn't. I was to your left. What's happened? The table's still moving. This table is still moving slightly. It's going. Can you feel it, Kieran? I can feel it, yeah. Moving ever so slightly. Yeah. OK. Do you want to try the glass? Because of the success of the last place, definitely. OK. Fingers mm -hmm. on glass. OK. If anybody at all feels... Are you all feeling all right in the room? Mm -hmm. Is everybody <coughs> feeling fine? I feel oh. light-headed. You do? Yeah. OK. I feel light-headed and I feel conscious. You do? Mm. OK. <coughs> Arms off the table. Lift your arm right off the table so it doesn't move, move anything. It was a normal seance. I mean, we've done hundreds of seances, but I knew, I knew this was the beginning, of, you know, of uh, what they were prepared to do. They were surrounding 
the seance. They were circling the seance and they knew it was any minute that they were going to enter that circle. Is there anybody here present in this room with us now? If you wish to talk to us, you can move this glass. Use our energy to try and communicate with us now. Please, oh. please move this glass as a sign. Please move this glass. Do you wish to talk to us? Wow. You do? <laughs> okay. Are you male? If you're male, please move the glass as a sign of yes. Are you male? Are you male? Are you female? Are you a woman? Are you a woman? You are a woman. Is your name Alice? No. Give me some names, Derek. Okay. Elizabeth. Are you Elizabeth? Are you Elizabeth? Is your name Elizabeth? Were you a witch, Elizabeth? Were you considered a witch? Oh. Elizabeth, can you see us, Elizabeth? Can you see us? Do you wish us to leave? If you do, give us a definite sign. Do you wish us to leave? Come on, we need more from you, Elizabeth. We won't leave unless you tell us to leave. Use all our energies to let us know that you want us to go. Oh Whoa! I could have been leaving the Conte. table. Okay. Did you die here, Elizabeth? Did you die here? Were you hanged, Elizabeth? Were you hanged? Oh. Were you tortured, Elizabeth? Can you affect a member of the crew here? If you can, around this table, take the glass to the person you will affect. Can you do that? If you want to touch one of them, please move the glass. To... OK, I'm waiting, Elizabeth. I'm waiting for you. Are you going to affect me? Push the glass towards me if you are. OK, I'm waiting. I'm waiting, Elizabeth. It may not be now. Mm. Are you going to do it now? Are you going to do it later? Are you OK? What's up, Kath? What's the matter? Kath, what's the matter? I feel sick. You feel sick? Are you on your own, Elizabeth? It's just me and Kath. Are you on your own? How many other people are with you? Are there many other spirits here? I will count up to ten. I want you to move the glass to let me know how many of you are in this room. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. You are joking. Nice. You all right? You're right Who was that? When it all started kicking off, you could have heard a pin drop in the studio. And I've never heard it anything like that on any of the most haunted lives I've ever done. And at one stage, and it still sticks in my memory this, I looked around the audience and every member of that audience was sitting there, their jaw dropped wide open. The first thing, obviously, when Yvette was and Derek were talking and they were on the table and the science was going on, I did feel breath beside me. What's up, Andy? Good morning. Yeah. What's so the matter? Something just, so just uh, like someone's breathing on my neck. You kidding? No, I'm serious. Okay. <coughs> Are you going to affect any other of the crew members here? <laughs> okay. Jeez. Oh! <laughs> the table. What was that? Okay. The table's just snapped. My. <laughs> okay. So it's I, snapped. I, I pressed hard on the glass thing because I didn't want it to go off. No. Or, no. Or, or on the floor, but. Is it snapped? Yeah. It's snapped off the bottom here. Yeah. Put your fingers back on. Yeah. Put your fingers back on. Elizabeth, are you still here with us now? Oh my. Oh my word. 
Elizabeth, we need more. Can you move this table? Can you move the table for us now? Can you try and lift the table for us? If you want us to leave, you need to do something else. You need to really scare us, Elizabeth, before we'll go. Come on, Elizabeth, do something else. Do something else, Elizabeth. Elizabeth, Elizabeth, come on. Do something else. Do you need our help, Elizabeth? Are you happy where you are now? Are you happy where you are? Do you hate us, Elizabeth? Is it because we're good people? Is that why you hate us? Jeez. watching the, uh, the monitors in the, in the scanner and I mean we've done a lot of these investigations as you know and uh, I've done thousands and thousands of outside broadcasts but I don't think I've, I've ever been aware um, of such activity on an outside broadcast uh, that has actually directly affected the crew and I've actually um, worried about the, uh, the, the continuation of the show. We're going to rejoin our investigation team. They're at uh, Tyndale Farm but they're also in the midst of a seance so let's go and join them right now. The draft around up my hand. Yes, yeah, same here. The draft yeah. around my hand. Yeah, she's really pushing. Elizabeth, can you try and lift this glass? Lift this glass, Elizabeth. Lift this glass for us. Lift this glass for us, Elizabeth. Lift it off the table if you can. Elizabeth, please lift this glass off the table if you can. Elizabeth, Elizabeth, can you move it off the table? Can you make the glass come off the table? Are you near anybody now? Point the glass if you're near anybody now. Great. Okay. You can't. Are you, um, are you going to... Have you, have you been following us, Elizabeth? Are you going to continue following us? Are you going to stay here? Elizabeth, is this where you used to meet? Did you torture people here, Elizabeth? Did you? Oh my! F that's yes. really freaky. Oh, yeah. I'm so what freaked happened? out. Okay, yeah, come, come on, come on. Okay. You tortured. You tortured people here, didn't you? She did. Do you know how nasty you are? Do you like being nasty? God. Don't you wish to go to the light to cross to the other side? Don't you want to go to the other side? Jeez, Are all good. nine of you still mm. here? Are all nine of you still here? Can you do something else apart from spinning this glass? Can you do something else apart from spinning this glass? There are nine of you in this room and all you can do is spin a glass? No, not really, not really. Mm -hmm. Can you do something else, Elizabeth? <laughs> Elizabeth, can you do something else? The first sign I had of something was kicking off was when John Gilbert felt something around his neck. Working on Most Haunted is unusual for me in that I've not just got my own job to do, doing the sound, I've also got to keep an eye on anyth anything else that might happen, see if anything strange is happening to any other crew members, listening out for sounds outside the room, from other rooms. So there's a, there's a lot to be thinking about and, and when something physical actually started happening to me, when I felt something around my neck, it's the first time I've ever experienced that. Is the table moving? Oh. You all right? Oh. What's the matter, what? John? What? John, 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 what's up? Right. John? I don't feel the timing. Oh, 
John Gilbert, who is a huge, big guy. He's six foot, you know, and uh, I'm sort of five foot three. And I was stood right next to him. And his, uh, he, he just suddenly started grabbing his throat and going, I can't breathe, I can't breathe. And I thought, this guy is going to collapse on me here and I can't do anything about it. He couldn't catch his breath and he felt something was round his, his throat. He, he didn't just feel it, he was almost choking with it. I thought, oh, oh what's going on here? He, was, he, he couldn't breathe and it was just unreal what was happening. You're right, John? Okay. Oh. He's got it again. Okay. You're right. Oh You're right, I'm all right. You're right. I've seen and heard other paranormal things on shoots, but to actually feel something, to be affected so directly, I, I, I just didn't know what to do. He's not, he's not a drama queen. He's, um, he's kind of a happy-go-lucky guy. He, uh, he takes the investigations very seriously, but you can also have a joke with him as well. And, and I know that to see him like that, it was quite horrific. Okay. Right, John. Okay. That's loosened that. It's loosened it, John, okay? Yeah, John. Alright. Yeah. Someone's just put that going? around you, that's all, okay? She's just trying to dishevel, okay? You're gonna be okay. Go on. You can breathe. You can breathe. I can, yeah. Okay. John, are you alright, darling? Yeah. You alright? Sure. My only concern is we've got to sort that out. We've got to get him out of there. So we made sure, that first of all, his airway wasn't being restricted by anything. It could have been a piece of clothing, it could have been where one of his camera leads is caught round or whatever else. That was what I first thought was happening. When I realised that it wasn't happening, that was when we had to think about getting him out. Now, I've heard this before when we've done um, investigations on other properties, and John quite, was quite new to the crew at the time, but to actually hear his voice sort of gurgling as if he couldn't quite get his breath was really frightening. When we do the series, it's quite common to experience um, uh, sort of a cold spot, um, uh, maybe feeling a little bit emotional, um, maybe seeing a shadow or seeing uh, an orb or a light. Those are very common phenomena, but for, to feel like you're choking and for uh, John to be so animated, I, I thought was very, um, very interesting. And uh, it was, that's what I think started the ball rolling. From a personal point of view, it was very moving, and it, it was uh, it was it was very confusing what happened. The only thing that took my mind off it was when Stuart just collapsed. That yeah, Derek was trying to move whatever was happening yeah. to me, and I looked round, and Stuart's on the floor. Something was actually wrapped round my neck. It was like a pair of hands or a rope, it, something like that. And straight away, I went down. Stuart just completely collapsed. Another really big guy, you know, and I started to feel a bit, um, like, I, I started to feel like I'd lost control a little bit because I, I couldn't, you know, I, I can't do anything in this situation where big blokes like this who are, you know, normally looking after me uh, are falling over. And then it just snapped, that's it, got to get on with it. Stuart's on the floor, he needs help. we just got work to do, you've got to get on with it. Jo oh! oh! What's that? Okay, okay. okay. I remember him bending over and making these horrible guttural noises as if he was being sick. Um, he couldn't get his breath again. He felt like he was being strangled too. His eyes were white. I mean, you looked at his eyes, there was no, they were just white, they'd rolled right back. A lot of people don't realise this, but he was actually sick. He actually had vomited. I was choking, I couldn't breathe, I didn't know where I was. And, and all of a sudden, all I can remember was, um, I think it was Andy, the head of security, he actually dragged me outside. I couldn't believe what was happening to my friends. You know, we've been in so many different locations and we've experienced many things, but this was different. It was, I could f feel the tension around the room. It was almost like it was a whirlwind going around the room. We got you. I actually got rid of Stu out of the building, made sure that we could uh, get his airway open, and that was one of my main concerns. Um, once I was quite happy with that, there was, there was no way I was going to let Stu back in. He was too distressed about it and whatever had happened, and I made sure that we had one guy who was on that doorway, and I did make it very clear that I wasn't happy for Stu to go back in, which the team were more than happy with. As far as I'm concerned, I could have died as soon as I walked back in there. <laughs> Watch his legs, watch his legs. Okay, we got him. Oh my. The fear of, of watching 
my friend, my colleague, he's also my cousin being picked up and taken out of that room. I remember being hysterical, almost screaming and, and panicking and, and calling out for a medic, anything, even though poor Andy Lynch, that's what he does, he's a medic. And seeing Stuart on the ground, not being able to breathe, was so frightening and confusion. I was thinking, what is going on? Yeah. Stuart, Stuart! Right, get rid of these cables. Just Come someone on. medical, oh. medical, yeah, anything. Don't worry. Chill, chill. We went out to make sure he was OK, because at one point he had stopped, he had actually stopped breathing, but he was, he was fine. It's right. like with John. Chill. OK. Chill. Stuart. Tell him, tell him, tell hang him, on, Steve, on, Stuart, Stuart. Can't take that off. Hang on, hang on, hang on. <coughs> right, so let's put around the back. Yeah, okay. Okay, Stuart. About that. Okay. Right. okay. Oh, Stuart. He's okay. He's going to be Stuart, okay. Stuart, he's going to be all right. He's just. He's going to be all right. Yeah. John felt a tightening round yes. his throat, and yeah. then like, the next thing that Stuart is retching like, and, and then he, he just went over. So at that point, I didn't know what the hell was going on. Then apparently Derek was there, and I, and I think he was unwrapping a noose out. Apparently that was round my neck. Now I was trying to reassure Stuart and tell him, look, it's not a real rope. It's just the thought of what they're sending out. But it feels as if it is to you. Now, come on. We, you come out of this. They can't harm you any more than what they've done. So it actually took me a while to actually come through that lot because the rest of the guys went back inside. Are you all right, Stuart? Yeah, some water. Are you all right? Water? Yeah. Anybody got some water for yeah. Stuart? Yeah, all right. Yeah. Relax, bro. Come on. That's all they're doing. They're putting, like, a rope they round. Said, they said, didn't okay, they? That's yes. what they were going to do. <laughs> Stuart, no, Stuart yeah, yeah, I know, Stuart, there. I know. You're all right, okay. Stuart. That's but all you they can do is place you it around. You went over, Stuart. Did you feel anything else on your body? No, it's just a stand strangulation up. all around me. Stand up. Yes. Yeah. No, I need it. I need some water. So, yeah. Let's go. Yeah. Oh my Come God. Come on, big guy. Come on, hang on. Okay. Come on, I'm okay. I'm okay. Yeah. 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 Oh, one of the other security guards actually helped me stand up and I said, I'm OK now, you can let go. And straight away I'd fell back down again, but the rest of the crew members didn't see that because they'd gone back inside finishing off the investigation. It frightened me. It frightened me really, really badly. I went outside to check the stupid was OK. Um, and then it was quickly get back in. We went back into the room. And then it was Kath. Um, she, she, um, she said that she felt odd. She felt... Um, she felt like she was being affected by something. Now I consider Kath Howe not only as my makeup lady but also as a friend. We spend a lot of time together and I know that she isn't, you know, she's not a good actress. She doesn't make things up. So to see a good friend of yours faint, collapse, her legs went completely, I couldn't believe it. I thought, no, not Kath. This can't be happening to Kath. I don't know if that was anything to do with paranormal or the fact that I just witnessed my friends um, collapsing, um, you know, taken out of the room. That I think, I think that I was just, I was scared, and that that I'd lost, I just lost it. Now, Kath is very sensitive, and it really worried me with her. We just seemed to be in a right old panic. And I'll never forget the sight of seeing little Kath being bundled up and just sort of taken out really quickly. Come on. Okay. Okay. Despite the trauma of the um, what was going on, despite the fact that it was very dramatic, um, I must admit it was it was quite amusing to see her legs kicking as as uh, Andy picked her up and hoiked her away. I wasn't going to take any uh, chances with Kath, so it was just a case of grabbing Kath, taking her outside. Again, she was very distressed at that point, and so was Stu still at that time. So again, I made the decision, and I did tell Carl there was no way I was going to allow them back in. What we were doing, we were going around with the glass, and I was asking specific questions where it was, um, are you going to affect any of the crew here tonight? And he, and he went, yes. And you were gonna, are you going to affect all of us? Anyway, oh, yeah, it's right. just you see your friends, you know, Stuart and Kath affected and John, and um, and that's what's happening. It seems to be picking one of us each off at a time. Yeah. Uh, so it's almost like are they are they frightening us? This what are they doing? That's them trying to dishevel us, as you said, pick one at a time, and to you know break the group up. No, well, they're not going to break it up. No, right, come no. on. Right. They've only got so much they can do, Evie. Okay. They know right, it as well. You're, You're all right, Carl. You're freezing. Yeah. You're all right. 
I know I got, I got extremely cold or very shaky. I wasn't really cold, but I was very shaky. And then I got sort of like cold inside. Yeah, you are, you're right. freezing. Okay. Do you want to try Doing again? Fact. Come on, come okay. on. Okay. Are you happy with your effect now? <laughs> okay. okay. Are you laughing at us? Oh. Who you yeah. are going to affect now? If I tell you what, all stand around this table. Oh. All stand around this table. Come close, John. All right, Carl. Everybody stand around this You're table. Right. Yeah. Who are you going to affect now? Point the glass at who you are going to affect yeah. now. Who are you going to affect now? Point the glass at who you're going to affect now. We're out there to investigate, and what was happening to me, I wanted to investigate further. Wh whatever it was, I wanted it to fully manifest. If I was going to be taken over, if I had been, at least I could have said, regardless of what sceptic may have said that I was acting, at least I could have said, for me, yes, I was taken over. Um, but unfortunately, that didn't happen. Are you all right, Carl? Careful, Carl. Carl. Yeah. Carl, I'm fine, right. I'm fine, I'm fine, I'm fine, I'm fine. Oh, John. Carl, you're freezing. No, I'm yeah. fine, I'm fine. Let's do all it. Right. Let's do it. Okay. More than that. Okay. Okay. Try and lift this table off my. Try and lift that was snatched out of my hand. Yeah. yeah. Try and lift this table off the floor. Try and get us all out. It's going to take you a long time to get each and every one of us out to so try and lift this table off the floor. Do something else, because you're only taking one at a time. You need to take all of us to get us all out. How are you going to do that? Lift this table off the floor and scare us all to death and we'll never come back again. Lift the table off the floor. You feel that breeze on your hands. Mm -hmm. My... Right across that. Come Whoa! On, Luke. You all right? You all right, it's Derek? All right. Yes, You're I'm all right? okay. I can feel it all around us. Everybody else feel okay? Let us know if you don't. Please come forward. That's you it. You cannot harm us. You cannot harm us. Lift the table off the floor. Lift the table off the floor. Lift the table off the floor if you can. Carl, I'm very worried about no, you. I'm fine. No, I'm you're, fine. Not. you're not. You're not, Carl. Fine. You're not. I'm fine. I'll, I'll let you know when I'm not. Okay. Okay. You okay, that's good. Yeah, yeah okay. 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 Whoa. Lift it higher, lift it higher. Come on, you're enjoying this, aren't you? You're enjoying yourself. Lift the table off the floor, Elizabeth. Come on, Elizabeth, do it again. Do it again, Elizabeth. Come on, you're affecting Carl, aren't you? You're enjoying it, aren't you? All right, Carl. Yeah, you're okay, Carl. You're okay. At this point, I was beginning to think, oh my God, you know, where, where is this going to go next? You know, we're going to end up with nobody. Uh, then the next thing is Carl, who had sort of been starting to act very strangely for, you know, a good sort of 10, 15 minutes. I'd said to him, Carl, do you want to go outside? But he, he said he didn't want to. Of course, David Wells was in the studio watching all of this. And after the event, I spoke to David and he said that he could actually see that Carl should have left a lot sooner. He did tell me off after it because he said that was my cue to leave, I should have left, but I was fighting it. Things were happening to Carl and he could have easily been affected in a much worse way. Fortunately for Carl, he was taken out, thank goodness. What was really, in a way, frustrating, really annoying for me with Carl was that Carl is very strong and actually was fighting it. And I could see him almost gritting his teeth and fighting it. And I knew that the longer he fought it, the worst in a, in a way it would be for him because it would really affect him. Rather than getting up and walking away from it, he was really fighting it. However, um, in the end, I think it got to him. At this point, I started to panic a little bit because I wasn't really sure what was going on. Come on, Elizabeth. Are you all laughing all right. together? Are you all laughing? Are you thoroughly enjoying yourself? OK. You okay. can't do any more, Carl. Carl, you're shaking. I thought Carl. I don't know. I... Carl, Kieran, what other questions should I ask now? There isn't any more questions. I remember trying to leave the table, but I don't remember much else until um, uh, until Kieran has actually was actually saying Carl's walking towards the cellar, and I was turned around at that point by Andy and put up against the wall because I was feeling quite strange. I realised around me there weren't many members of the crew left, um, just just a handful of people, um, and 
I knew that it was going out live and in the back of your mind you're, you're, I'm trying to make it look as good as possible, trying to make the best of the situation. This was a unique um, and, and unique event. I realised that it had never been as dramatic as it was. It had never affected so many members of the crew so quickly. Um, and it was very exciting, but at the same time, I didn't want to faint, I didn't want to have to, I wanted to film it. And all of a sudden, all hell broke loose inside that house, and I thought, holy shit, what the hell's going on in there? If you want us to okay. leave now, please, a one final attempt, try and throw this table across the floor. Try and lift it up and throw this table across the floor. You know you can... <laughs> Andy was outside dealing with everybody else that, you know, was, was, was collapsing. And I screamed, I was like, security, security! And poor Andy came running in, you know, he was, he was trying to deal with all this on, him, on his own. Once we got back inside, I'd moved around to the other side. Sally was starting to go a little bit hysterical at that stage, so we calmed her down. I looked across at the table and then I heard Yvette shout out, John. He thought he'd, he'd hit his head. He put his head back and then he collapsed. I was overcome and I realised that I couldn't hold the camera anymore, um, that I felt, I just felt like I was going to fall on the floor and I didn't want to break the camera and I was also aware of trying to keep the shots. I was fighting something and I don't know what that was. I've known John for 12 years, um, we've worked together on just about every si different situation you can, you can imagine in television. Again, I can vouch for John, you know, John is very sceptical. I, I think I remember falling to my knees and I remember passing or putting the camera on the table uh, in front of Yvette. And the camera uh, went onto the table. I seem to remember Yvette um, panicking but picking up the camera. I grabbed hold of the camera and at this point the lead um, giving the live uh, feed so that we could receive pictures, the cable, I, I tore the camera and the cable came out. So of course we lost all the pictures um, and, and Andy came in and grabbed him and, and, and took him outside. I wasn't really bothered about the camera angle or anything about TV then, it was just a case of getting John outside. Well, we've uh, lost Yvette, Derek and the rest of the team. When the camera operator, John, um, uh, collapsed and, and we lost the pictures, at that point, for the first time, I think, in my career, I was genuinely worried that, uh, that we were going to lose the show, but more than that, I was generally worried for the safety of my crew. Sally, the, the floor manager, uh, announced uh, from the dark, because we had no pictures, uh, that she'd lost all the crew. And at that point, um, I got on the phone and dialed up my foreman on site uh, just to check uh, that, uh, that things were still happening. I've only ever experienced that once before, in a, in a seance once before, um, on a celebrity special uh, with Vic Reeves. And, um, but this was the second time, and it was, it, was, it was amazing. It was an amazing feeling. And nothing happened to me, but I was just watching my friends and colleagues falling around me. John completely, I think, passed out. And at that point, when I saw John being carried out by the security guy, um, Andy, it was just for me, I was just jumping up and down the sea. I just had to get out, and of course I can't because I have other things to do there. And it would have been nice if David Wells was there because he could have perhaps offered protection uh, or offered some, some kind of... Um, uh, back up. It was all very, very scary. Everybody was fine, but it was just what was happening around me. Just I couldn't believe it. It was just unreal. It just didn't seem, you know, what was going on. We'd only gone in there half an hour before, and, and we were being brought out one by one. It was bedlam inside. It was, and obviously from the, to the TV point of view, I don't know. I haven't seen it. All I was concerned with was the the, uh, the investigation team. But it was really, really worrying for me because they're my friends and doubly worrying because I kind of felt and knew exactly what they were dealing with. I'm trained to deal with these things. I can do what needs to be done, but these guys aren't. As soon as that happened, it felt like something hit me. And I mean something with a, with a, with a very strong punch hit me because I was KO'd completely. Next thing I remember was being outside with, uh, uh, with the security guys, um, literally, uh, bringing me around and all I could say was who hit me. All I could see while the pictures were off was, was, were my friends and colleagues just being taken out, dropping like flies. And myself and Yvette, who were, neither of us are very technically minded, trying to get pictures back for the gallery, you know, trying all these leads and cables and trying to fit them together and eventually we did and we got pictures back and then slowly the crew started to come back in the room as they started to feel better. I had to go back in because whatever it was, uh, I had to see. I, I, I had to find out what it was, um, 
if it was paranormal, I needed to be right in my own mind. Uh, but most of us went back in and we carried on. We got communications back and we just realised that there were just, it was a scene of carnage um, up at the cottage. They're They've come back. We, we have now got uh, regained, uh, a regained signal. John, explain. John, what's Somebody happening? Somebody just tapped me on the back of the head. Right, on the back of the head. Yeah. You're right. You're okay. okay. Yeah, I'm not going to get on you. Yeah, you're all right. Okay, good, 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 good. 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 No, come on. Come on. What's come on. happened? Who's did that? You all right, Sally? Okay. Carl, are you okay? Oh, yeah? Come on, come out for a minute then. What would happen if we stood around? and didn't have our fingers on... I think that the glass thing is, is giving the, the energy around, yeah. isn't it? Do you want us to keep our fingers on this glass? Yeah, you freeze. Yeah. The glass? The, 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 the glass is moving on its own with my finger on it. I know the other guys were inside and they were they were carrying on with the seance and there was so much activity happening there. I could hear the, um, the voices and what was going on. Um, it, was, it, was, it was my scariest place that I've ever, ever been to. Come on, I'm inviting you. You despicable souls. You dirty souls. You dirty souls. <laughs> oh, you. Pick it up, pick it up. Where is it? Got it. You all right, Derek? Derek, yeah, Derek, yeah, get I'm it fine. off. Get it off, Derek, get it off. Come forward, Derek. Derek, come forward. Derek. Derek, Derek, come forward, it's Ivy. Don't let them get you. Derek, listen to me. Listen to me. Okay, yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Don't let them get into you. You're strong, okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Have some water, sweetheart. Are you all right? Have some water. Sweetheart. You don't even know where you are, do you? He doesn't know. Exact him, exact him, exact him. I'm going to stand up for it, seriously. Stand up, stand up, darling. Yeah. After everybody had fainted, we all decided that we had to go back in there. We had to find out if it was true. Were there really dark entities trying to hurt us? Good, good. Oh, my... Uh, it's it just the most amazing things have been happening mm. here. Carl has, mm. has dropped. John is back on camera. But just explain, John, if you can, what happened to you. I don't know. I don't know what happened to me. I just felt... I don't I know. I felt if... sick. I felt sick. I felt ill, and then I just felt like I was fainting. And I just had to put the camera down, and I just remember being dragged out. That was all. All right. And I don't I know. I don't know if the studio happened to have seen these pictures of, of, of John collapsing and then Carl collapsed. Kath was also taken out. She collapsed. We've se apparently seen them. So. Carl is fine, Kath is fine, mm. John is back up, Stuart is fine, everybody's fine. Derek, are these spirits trying to harm us or are they just trying to frighten us? They're doing their best to, uh, to frighten us, to alarm us, to dishevel us. They can't do it anymore. I, I, I know what they've done is seriously enough, but um, they, they've been taking time out, Ivy, to, and they're laughing, they're, they're alir they think it's hilarious because they're answering your questions. Kieran, what, what do you think? One by one, take each think, one Kieran? out. I witnessed, I witnessed all of this and it has been an absolute frenzy here. It's really difficult to like, keep track of everything that's going on, but the crew are dropping like flies. They're just going, it just people are having such amazing experiences. EMF, normal. Air pressure, normal. The only thing is, if there are any comments about infrasound, that's a possibility, but there's just so many people having just bizarre experiences. And how do you feel yourself? I feel, I feel fine. I'm just trying to keep level-headed, because okay. that's my role. It's moving already. Can yeah. you feel it? Yeah. Andy, can you feel that? Andy, can yeah. you feel it going? Yeah. Now, what we've done is... Are we on air? Are we on air? Are we on air? I don't know if we're on air. We are on air. OK. OK, what we've done is Andy, who's security, who's been helping everybody, we just thought, because everybody's dropping like flies, is that Andy's just stepped in just to experience what we're experiencing. Can you feel it, Andy? Yeah, you can feel it moving. Yeah, OK. No pressure on the glass. OK. All right. Elizabeth, are you still here with us now? Okay. What do you think to the new member sitting around the table? Are you going to harm him? Can you see him? If you can, point to him. Point to the new member sitting around the table. Oh, my... OK. Can you try and harm Andy? Try and frighten him? OK. 
okay. We need to try and get you in a... Uh, uh... Oh, you all right, Evie? Yeah, I'm fine. What's the matter? No, I'm fine, I'm fine, I'm fine. We're just going to try and need to get some surnames. Kieran said we need to get some surnames. Okay, Elizabeth. Is Alice with you? Is Alice with you? Alice is with you. Give me some more names, Derek. Come on, Sam, ask me. Ask this one. Ask this Elizabeth. Okay. Try and lift this table. Try and lift this table. Try and harm one of us. Southern. Sounds like Southern. Summer? South, no. Southworth. Southworth. It's Southworth. Southworth. Are you Elizabeth, Elizabeth Southworth? Southworth. Yes. Elizabeth Whoa. Southworth. Oh my. Whoa. Whoa. Elizabeth Southworth. Is okay. that you? Definitely. Okay. All right. Right, we're gonna go now. Are you gonna give us some one great big scare? Give us one. Oh, oh, oh. We. Okay. Oh yeah. my. I have never ever experienced anything like this in my life. Yeah. I have never experienced sense, anything. I have yeah. never seen so many people being picked off. Are you gonna do one last thing before we go? Okay, make this table jump up then. Make this table jump up. We're not gonna go until you do. Are you getting angry with us? Are you getting angry? Make this table flip up in the air if you can. Make this table flip up if you can, Elizabeth. Are you all right, Carl? Are you yeah, okay? Sure. You're fine. Andy, how are you feeling? Fine. You're all right. Okay. Keep recording. We're going to keep recording this. Woo! Ah! OK. And that's when the programme ended, but we carried on recording. We had to find out what was causing this. And Yvette, being extremely brave and being a tad annoyed, uh, whatever it was that was in that room, doing that to all of us, um, went in and started screaming, come on, you bitch. Um, show us something else. Stand on the table, put your fingers on the table. Right, you bitch, come on. Come on, just move your chair there. Can you hear me? If you can hear me, we've not gone yet. Come on, move this table now. Can you move the table? Right, come on, move this table. Wow. Move the table. Come on, wow. bitch, let's see what you can do. Come on, let's see what you can do. Yeah, you don't frighten me. Come on, then, let's see you move this table, you cow. Come on, what? you don't frighten me. Come on, oh you don't God. frighten me, you <laughs> bitch. Go for it. <laughs> Right. Yeah. Wow, wow, wow. Wow, wow. Both legs gone. Mm. That's been wrenched out. Look at that. Yeah. Mm. Look at that. Yeah. That's been wrenched out. That's it. Well. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my God. She's <gasps> done it. Good well, well done, Elizabeth. You've done it. Yeah. And we're yeah. going to leave you now. Derek, Derek, yeah. can you close this down? Yes. Can you do what you can, can to do yes. what you can? Do it now, We somebody, are please. now leaving your area. We will not allow you to leave this area with us. We will leave you in your area. You stay here through the power of light. You stay within your darkness. We will not allow you. Please bring the light around this property and keep in this evil, this force that's in the fabric. We demand you stay here. You cannot follow us, either individually or collectively. Hear my voice, you group, you group of nothingness, you evil, stay within the fabric. This is our command. We are stronger than you. Oh, that should be sufficient now, Ivy. They can't leave with us. Are you all right? OK. Yeah, fine. I'm fine. You okay? okay? Yeah, just, okay. just shaky, that's all. I'm yeah. fine. Carl, yeah. I'm shaky. Right. Andy, I'm fine. Does that just come as well? Bye okay. bye, audience. Bye bye. Oh Let's get out of here, guys. Yeah, come on. Let's get out of yeah. here. Yeah. Come on, come on.
After the event, I was so concerned about everyone. Um, what I did was I got them individually and all together. Now, individually, I had a word with them, make sure they're okay, uh, spiritually, physically, etc., etc. But then, as a group, we've we've sat down, we've meditated, and I've tried to introduce these guys to first of all their spiritual guides, and probably for this kind of work, more importantly, the doorkeepers. Now, the doorkeepers are, if you like, psychic defenders. They stand in front of us all, and they will push away anything negative. Now, if you have a strong relationship with these doorkeepers, which we now have then nothing but nothing can harm you. And just in case, I also gave everyone a crystal, which was obsidian, which is for protection and grounding. So hopefully, there's a lot more of a defense there now for the future. Last night was extraordinary. Yvette, what happened last night? I don't know. I really don't know. But I have to say, it's possibly, well, it has been, last night, the most terrifying time I've, I've ever seen. To watch your close friends just falling on the floor, collapsing, fainting, seeing Stuart, he couldn't breathe. Everything was just... It was awful. Just describe what, what sort of happened and what came over, what feelings you had. Well, as soon as we went into the, to the location, everybody felt quite nervous. Um, and we were all standing around a table, we were doing something called glass divination, where we were hoping for the glass to move. And as we were doing this, uh, first of all, it was John, the sound man, sort of started off. And he said, I, I actually feel like something's tightening around my throat. And he actually couldn't breathe. Um, and we were all, you're, you're all right, you're all right. And then the next person, I, c I can't remember. It was all such a melee and people running around. And then I think John went and collapsed on the floor. Then Stuart, we actually thought he was throwing up. I mean, and then he couldn't breathe. He had to be taken out. Then Kath went on the floor. And oh, it was awful. Let me just ask Derek very quickly. It seemed from where we were that you appeared to be under attack. We were under attack. We were spiritually tested. And you know, we had eventually nine spirit people, nine women that were determined to follow us to each location and build this negativity that they brought with them to attack us. Do you know, it's one thing actually, I think, for us sitting here watching you. It must have been quite something else to have been there. But what I want to do now is actually to show you some of the highlights of last night, just so you can relive it, really. Have a look at this. <laughs> Are you going to affect any other of the crew members here? Okay. Oh! Jeez. The okay. table's just snapped. Oh. He's got it again. Okay. You're right. I'm all right. Okay, okay. Right. 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 you're right. Okay, we got in there. Tell him, tell him, Steve, he's trying to take that off. Hang on, hang on, hang on. <coughs> My legs is gone. Oh, 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 Try and throw this table across the floor. Try and lift it up and throw this table across the floor. You know you can. Ah! Ah! Keep recording, we're going to keep recording this. Ah! Okay. Yeah, he's taking it over. Do you know, um, it sends an absolute shiver down my spine to watch that, but I can see that <laughs> it's really upset you. Yeah, it has, because you don't actually know what's... Um, you can't see any of that. You no. just know what's going... But it's, you just see your friends, and um, it was real. Everything that happened was real. And I know many, many people will say, oh, you were acting it, it things like that. You know, we weren't. It was genuine and it was really frightening. And a lot of the crew members, they couldn't sleep last night. Poor John, no. he actually had to turn the telly around in his hotel room because he thought something in, his, in the room was watching him. Poor Kath nearly locked on, knocked on our door because she was so frightened in the hotel room. Uh, we just couldn't sleep. I mean, I, had, I, I think I got three hours of sleep last night. And you're so worried that something's going to follow you home. or But it's just seeing it there, you know, it's just... It brings it all back. Yeah, it does. I mean, I have seen that before, but I've been nervous all day about tonight and everything, and it was just really freaky. I have to say, you know, it, watching it last night was, was, was terrifying sitting here, let alone being there. What yeah. did you make of it, Kieran? Well, on these investigations, I always have to try and stay level-headed, and last night was the toughest for me to stay level head. Normally I'll focus just on one phenomena, but there was just stuff going on all over. It was like being a medic in a battlefield. What happened at that particular location was fantastic. It was for me a psychological hotbed of activity. The difficulty for a parapsychologist is that there isn't one explanation for everything that occurred. For John Gilbert, the feeling I get is that suggestion played a major factor. Also, we're in a room 
where it was quite dusty. However, I don't want to take anything away from his experience. If we then turn to Stuart's experience, we might get into the realms of hysteria. There was certainly a lot more of a physiological reaction, and for him it was very, very genuine. But his reports of the sort of experience that he was getting tie in with what you might expect from hysteria. The, the difficulty to breathe, uh, the heart beating very, very fast, and just that almost uh, powerless to control uh, what is happening to your body, and that kind of ties in with hysteria. But then there seemed to be a knock-on effect. As soon as that happened to Stuart, uh, Kath was extremely concerned, very, very shocked at what happened to Stuart. Um, so much so that she had a reaction. Um, the difficulty again is we can't explain it necessarily because of hysteria or because of suggestion. Speaking to Kath after the event, she was very much just shocked by what happened. Uh, she said she kind of lost control of her legs. So possibly because of the emotional effect of witnessing what was happening to Stuart and John, that could explain that. With John Dibley, his experience where he actually fell down at some point and was leaning on the table, his head quite loose. Chatting to him afterwards about his experience again, the dynamics of it and the way he explained his experience was very different to John Gilbert's, to Stuart's and to Kath's. But what we might be looking at here is some sort of altered state, uh, almost hypnotic state if you will. You're looking at a situation where we've got a lot of suggestion, we've got the possibility that there are spirits in the room. John is trying to focus on the phenomena that's going on all the time. Uh, colleagues, friends essentially, are dropping around him like flies. And it's almost with that and also the instructions that they're giving around the table, he may have gone into some sort of altered state. Or a simpler explanation might be that uh, he fainted. It's as simple as that. Carl had an extreme experience as well when he was sitting at the table. Again, it's very, very difficult to tie it in to the other experiences that the people were having. Dynamically, it was very, very different. From a phenomenological point of view, Carl, again, he might have been in some sort of altered state. He reported many times that he didn't really know what was going on. Uh, at some point, I think he even commented on uh, his hearing and just a general sense that he almost as though he wasn't really there. He also reported the sensation of extreme drop in temperature. I think he was shaking at some point uh, that he was feeling so cold. Yeah. Carl's experience is quite unique because there are two different aspects. The, the loss of sense of awareness is one particular experience. The shaking because of the feeling cold is another. With the drop in temperature, you have to remember we were in a room with the window open, but Carl had become very comfortable with the ambient temperature. Although there were repeated suggestions when people were standing around and sitting at the table that the temperature was dropping, and that may have exacerbated any drop in temperature he had. The point I'm trying to make is that speaking to everybody's, everybody after their experience, and even weeks afterwards, we're looking at lots of different possible psychological causes for what happened. And for me, that made it an absolutely fantastic experience. And everybody, as far as I'm concerned, was having a truly genuine experience. Whether you, whether you say it's suggestion, hysteria, whatever. They weren't playing a role. They were having genuine experiences. In my opinion, I was very lucky to be part of the experience that everybody had. It was truly unique in terms of any of the investigations that the Most Haunted team has been involved with. Do I think it's paranormal? No. In my opinion, I think what we were looking at, again, was a psychological hotbed of activity, but still equally fascinating. What is great about the experiences that people reported at Tyndale Farm is their post hoc interpretation of the experience is not one of a paranormal nature. They regard it as a phenomena, they don't understand what happened, 
but they are not attributing a paranormal source to it. And that, I think, is good. It shows a level of professionalism that should exist in haunting investigations. I don't understand it. I, 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 I will never be able to understand what happened that night. And in all the years that I've been in television, I have never ever seen a sight or heard sounds like that night. I've been to a lot of very frightening places. I've been to war zones, I've been all over the world, had people shooting at me, I've seen bombs going off, I've seen people being killed. But nothing compares to your good friends and colleagues being attacked by things you can't even see, things you don't understand, things that until half an hour ago I didn't even believe in. It was the most scariest and I don't know if any other floor manager has ever been in that position where she literally has no crew left. <laughs> I think if I'd have been in that situation, you know, I would have been out of that farmhouse and uh, away from the whole location and just, I would have been the biggest scaredy cat, but I think the, the whole team were incredibly brave. I have to admit, I don't know what happened in that room. I, I'm not saying it was paranormal. Something strange happened in, a, in there. It's, it's, it's very difficult for me to make sense of the situation. I don't know what it was, but I know it overcame each and every one of us in that room. One thing I don't understand is why nothing happened to me. The more it happens, the more you want to see it happen, the more you just think, yeah, this, this is what we're here for. You know, this is what most sources is all about. If we're not getting this, we're not doing our jobs properly. I've worked with them for a lot of years. Um, I have no, I trust them completely. And although I'm no expert, I can't say that it was paranormal, but there was definitely something in there. There was something happening. Some people say it was mass hysteria. I don't think it was that, it was something. As I said, I used to be very, uh, very skeptical. Now I'm a bit more open-minded because I can't explain what it was. I have to say that uh, in my career, I've never experienced a night like that. Anyone who says the uh, crew were faking it, uh, in my opinion, would, would be wrong. I mean, I, I spoke to several members of the crew afterwards, and I mean, I, I was as excited as anybody to know. You know, was it really happening? Was it happening? Something's out there because uh, something did that to us. We just don't know what it is. I was so scared. I got, got in bed and I felt the bed shaking and I thought, oh my God, my bed's possessed and it wasn't, it was me. I was shaking. I was still shaking from, from what had happened to me. It sort of reaffirmed, um, reaffirmed, you know, the fact that there is, there are unexplained things, you know, there, there, it was completely unexplained. I still don't know what it, what it was that affected me. It did make a quite, quite a lasting effect on us and I think even now, uh, I mean, John, uh, John Gilbert's to, to my left at this present moment, and he even said he doesn't really like listening to it because it sort of brings it back, and it does, but maybe that's good therapy. When I started work on Most Haunted, I was pretty sceptical about things. I'd never seen, never seen a ghost, never really had any paranormal experiences. But over the course of the, the recorded shows I've done, I was getting a little more open-minded. But then when you're in a room and things like that happen, there's no question, you can't explain it. It wasn't mass hysteria. I felt something around my neck. That's not hysteria. That was, that was a physical thing that happened. And it really is making me change my mind. And I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing a full apparition or something like that. You know, it's, it's got to happen sooner or later. I think it will always be now, um, in my mind, the, uh, the most extraordinary and exciting and frightening uh, ex uh, most Haunted Live we, we have done to date. It was fantastic to be a part of, uh, of a, a piece of television history. We, more people watched that show than any other show uh, on television that night, which is great. Um, it proves that people do want to see this on the television and we will always continue to, to try and, um, uh, and show them. We will always give an honest account uh, of what we see and what we feel. Um, and hopefully one day we will catch a full manifestation of, uh, of a ghost if, uh, if they do exist. I know that obviously Carl and Yvette, I've spoken to at great length, and I know that the team are very interested in going back. In fact, more than interested, I'd say they're, they're jumping at the chance. I think it would be fantastic if Yvette and Derek and the rest of the crew felt as a group that they could go back to face uh, that farm and try and find real closure and ex uh, understand some of the experiences and the phenomena that uh, they encountered that night, I think it would make for a fascinating, most haunted investigation. I think we should go back there. I, um, I, I know it's been suggested that we go back there to do a show, um, go back to Tyndale Farm. It would be interesting to do that.
Well, after watching that, most people would think I was crazy to come back here again. Well, I've not come on my own. I've brought the whole crew to reinvestigate Tyndale Farm. They are, at this moment in time, a group force of five who are in the atmosphere listening. The others will follow. Elizabeth, are you here? Pressure, you get all on its own. This isn't good. This is not good. This isn't good. I've got a bad feeling about this. I've got a bad feeling about this. There's nothing. There's no one there. You're right, Carl. I have such an anger inside me at this moment. I can't even turn it. I, 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 I'm... What, hit someone? It's fine. I, 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 I find... I've got to calm down. I've got to find everything that's going to be fucking stupid. Can you make the light bulb swing above our heads? Do anything. Can I do something else? 